Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall. In today's tutorial, we are going to tackle some wallpaper. This is a quick tutorial. It's more of an overview of how to install wallpaper in a fun time lapse, but it will give you some tips and tricks and just a couple of guidelines on how to install wallpaper in your home. You'll want to follow the manufacturer's instructions, of course, for more detailed instructions but I was really excited to partner with a new wall to transform my nephew's room into my new niece's nursery. So we chose the dark floral wallpaper from a new wall and it really did transform the space. I can't get over what a difference it makes. And now I think it's just the perfect feminine nursery. Here's a supply list if you wanna screenshot this. I know it looks overwhelming, but chances are you probably have a lot of these items already in your garage or craft room. And I'll go into detail a little bit more on all of the items so that you know what they look like and why you need them. For the first one, we are going to talk about the wallpaper. We chose the pre-pasted option from a new wall. There's also a traditional option. You'll also need a straight edge or ruler to cut in with. A plastic scraper is good to smooth out the paper. A level measuring tape and a pencil will allow you to mark a plumb line on your wall. Scissors and X-Acto knife will come in handy to trim your wallpaper. We ended up using a box cutter because it had a sharper blade, so that's good to know as well. You'll need plastic, a paint roller, and a paint tray to apply the water on the back of your paper. A seam roller is optional, and a sponge to clean your walls. To start, we are going to wash our walls with a damp, clean sponge. I didn't use any soap, just water, and I wiped down all of the walls so that the wallpaper had a good, clean surface to adhere to. Then we're gonna measure our wallpaper. Mine was 25 inches wide. Remember that measurement and subtract two inches from it. So we're gonna measure 23 inches and mark that in about four to five places and just mark it with an X. And then you're gonna connect all those marks with a level and this line will act as a level guide when you hang your first piece of wallpaper. Lay a piece of plastic down to protect your floors. It's just water that we're working with, but since we're activating the adhesive, you wanna make sure that your floors are protected from the water and the adhesive. Then we're gonna find the first piece of wallpaper and a new wall labels each of their pieces with a number in the upper left-hand corner. Make sure that you pay attention to what side is the top and the bottom so that you don't hang your mural upside down. Then you're gonna roll on a generous amount of water to activate the glue. And once you have all your water, you're going to fold over your wallpaper onto itself and smooth it out with a plastic scraper. Repeat that process on the other side. And if it doesn't line up perfectly straight, you can readjust it as much as you need to get it all straight and even. Then we're gonna just let that set for about 10 minutes and come back and hang it up on the wall. To install the actual wallpaper, you're going to use your step stool and hang the wallpaper two to three inches higher than your wall. So you'll see that I have an overhang on the top and then the right edge of the wallpaper, I'm going to line that up with my line that I drew on the wall. That'll ensure that I have a nice level piece of wallpaper, even if my walls aren't level. So you can readjust that and line up your wallpaper as many times as you need which I was surprised by that you could peel off the wallpaper and put it back on the wall several times to make sure that it's super even with that line that you drew on your wall. After you're done lining up, you're going to cut off the excess from the top so that you can get rid of that weight hanging down over the top, trim that away, and then you're going to start cutting in on the wall side. If you're working with a window, you'll also be cutting in to the window. So you just wanna make sure to cut a couple of relief cuts I used my scissors and just cut into the window a little bit so that it wasn't as tight and that way we could get a straight edge in and cut along the window and the wall at the same time. Since we subtracted two inches and measured our line 23 inches from the wall as opposed to 25, that will ensure that we don't have any gaps. So even if our wall isn't straight, we're not going to run into a problem where we are short any wallpaper. So having that two inch buffer really gives you peace of mind when you're working down that you're not going to run out of any wallpaper. For the second piece of wallpaper, you're going to start by lining up where the mural or repeating pattern continues. So you'll just place the wallpaper so that the pattern continues and you'll press the seam up against each other. If there's any gap, you can kind of just push the wallpaper over. I was impressed by that. I thought we were gonna have to peel it off and replace it, but you can just place it onto the wall. And if there's a little bit of a gap, you can kind of just use your hands and push it over so that the gap closes and the seams align perfectly, hiding any, any visible seam. 
Once you have the seams aligned, the top edge should also have two to three inches off the top since that's where we started with the first piece. And you'll trim off that top excess amount first. Then you'll continue to work down and cut in along the window. And you'll just wanna go slow and make intentional cuts so that you don't accidentally cut your wallpaper too close or too far so that you don't have any mistakes that will be visible. After two panels, we were basically pros. The third panel, we don't have any windows to cut along, so it went up really easily. Again, you're just going to start by matching up your seams and making sure that you cut off the excess on the top. If you see any gaps, you can use your hands to push those over, and then you're just gonna use your sponge to smooth it out. You'll also notice that the bottom of our wallpaper is still folded under while we're hanging the top part. We didn't unfold our bottom piece of the wallpaper until we were to that point on our wall. Just make sure that when you're making any cuts that you're aware of the bottom if it's folded under so you don't cut through that bottom piece. If you wanna use your seam roller, you can use your seam roller. Be careful if your walls are textured, you just wanna make sure that you don't take off any of the print on your wallpaper. For the next panel, you're kind of just rinsing and repeating. You'll just go slow, make sure that you're lining up your seams and cutting away the excess. So by panel number four, you should feel really confident. I wish that we had a practice wall to do beforehand because by panel four, we felt like we could be professional wallpapers at this point. We decided that we were gonna cut off the excess so that we didn't have to work around the window. So we cut off the top piece and then we actually, we actually cut off the bottom piece too and then cut a strip to connect the two. So you don't have to do that. It was easier for us. We, you would have a couple more seams because of that, but since they were such small cuts, we weren't worried about having those two little seams right behind the window since it wasn't very visible in the room. For the last piece, it went up just as easily. It really was imperative that we gave the wallpaper company accurate dimensions because when we ordered the wallpaper, they recommended ordering wallpaper that was four to six inches wider than our wall so that we had a two to three inch buffer on each side and at the top and the bottom. So if you're ordering wallpaper, make sure to give yourself about four to six inches on the width and the height so that you have a little bit of buffer so that you don't run into an issue where you're short any wallpaper. I know this tutorial was shorter than my normal tutorials, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the process to give you the confidence to tackle your own wallpapering projects. So if you have wallpapering tips, leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear what tips you have so that next time I tackle my future wallpapering projects, I have even more tips and tricks. So let me know what you would recommend in the comments. And hopefully this tutorial gives you the confidence to tackle wallpapering projects because it was a lot easier than I thought. All right, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you in the next tutorial.